All right, so here we're out here in Santa Monica. I was filming a, a video of my buddy Brandon Carter and actually just bumped into a Kino Body follower. What's up, dude? Hey, man, dude. It is a pleasure meeting you. I could never saw you out here. Thanks, man. What's your, so what's your name? My name is Jared Thompson. Jared. Uh, I've been following your stuff for a really long time. Uh, inspirational as hell, man. Like, man. Uh, everything you're doing, like, encouraging people to follow their dreams and everything. It's just, it's really resonating with a lot of people. That means a lot to me. No, I it's really huge, man. That. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. Like, I was just like, oh, my God, there he is. Like, uh, I thought you were in Canada. So get out here as much as can. We need Greg out here in uh, Los Angeles, everybody. So uh, I don't know. Start a poll on that we'll set up a <laughs> little house somewhere you can just train people here full time there we go what's going on slow down a second okay i know people on youtube they're all about like you know instant entertainment they want their mind to grab onto something right away and that's why a lot of the popular youtube channels they're like a lot of cut clips like boom 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 it's because your mind or your ego rather is looking to grip and clench onto some information for you know some food for the mind but slow down slow the fuck down allow your mind to become still for a second allow your mind to shut the fuck up for a second you're not really happy when your mind is in control and constantly craving more and more entertainment that just means you're on like a lower vibration. I don't like to use the terms vibration, but you're on that lower vibration. I want to talk about something I think is important as far as happiness is concerned. Um, it's about resistance. It's about living in a state of non-resistance. As Eckhart Tolle puts it, In the New Earth, he talks about um, this story with this, um, I'm pretty sure it was a Buddhist monk. I don't remember that well, but I think his, um, his students or his pupils were like wanting to find out his secret to be so happy and at peace. And finally, he told them, he's like, do you want to know what my secret is? It's this. I don't mind what happens. That's fucking powerful. That's really fucking powerful. I think a lot of times we go through life with a constant state of wanting. We want something to happen. We want something to work out a certain way. We go through life with neediness in multiple areas. We want to manipulate, you know, our experience to suit our wants and desires. How does that work out for you? I don't know. Maybe for some of you it works out very well, but I think it kind of leads to constant disappointment and upset. Because especially, interestingly enough, when you want something to work out, usually and you have that intense neediness, usually it kind of, the universe brings about the opposite. Um, it's like, you know, uh, it's like actually Tolly puts it, which I think, you know, not to like worship Tolly by any means, but I think he does such a beautiful job at exposing, you know, the truth about life. Um, one of the things he says is, life brings not what you necessarily want, but um, what is most important or desired for your conscious development. So life brings experience that's most important for your personal growth. So when you have this intense neediness and desire for something to happen, you kind of attract the opposite. But hold up a second, okay? Let's go back to, I don't mind what happens. I think people, um, label too often. We label events as good or bad or you know disappointing and whatnot. And um, we destroy the truth there because ultimately everything, there's a duality. Everything has with it um, the opposite. You can't have good without bad. 
So even, you know, a really horrible event or circumstance, there's always some hidden goodness there. There's always some positivity there if you look deep enough. But when our mind clings on to the negative and labels it, then we kind of create this stress and this cortisol response. So I think a, a great way to live your life is in a state of non-resistance, not resisting the circumstances that happen. Um, it's like, it's like actually flowing with life. I mean, another like kind of really cool thing to think about is um, most people live their life in like three ways, okay? They either view life as a, um, as a means to an end, a stepping stone to get to somewhere better. Like they view the present moment, like this moment, which is life, is all we have. We don't live in the future, we don't live in the past, we live right here. They either view that as a uh, stepping stone into the future for some better, some better future, you know. Maybe it's like, you know what, when I have this, this, and this, then I'll be happy. Or, you know, as soon as I get here, then I'll, you know, I'll be happy. So they view this moment as a stepping stone, you know. They devalue it completely. Or they view the present moment as an object to overcome or an obstacle to overcome, rather. You know, it's like, oh, I just need to, you know, I just need to get through this. This is horrible. I need to get past this and then life will be better. And usually, you know, new obstacles and problems always arise. Um, and thirdly, most people view life as um, as um, an enemy, you know, when they're constantly complaining about the present moment. Oh, I hate what I'm doing. Oh, I can't stand my surroundings. Oh my God, it's so cold. Oh my God, life is like, I'm so unlucky. Nothing goes my way, so on and so forth. Uh, people either view life as really like um, a stepping stone into the future, a better future. That's silly then they reach a state of unfulfillment or lack or dissatisfaction or they view life as an obstacle or they view life as an enemy and um, what do you think happens you know when you do one of those three things because the present moment is inseparable from life life is this moment if you are resisting the present moment if you're resisting it you're arguing with life you're creating conflict you're creating stress and you're actually asking for more stress. You're asking for more conflict. But when you accept this, you know, your, your events and circumstances, when you accept life and you accept the present moment, then it, it's almost like an ally. It's almost like a friend. I know this sounds very, you know, maybe a bit woo woo, but I mean, the truth is there. And if you look into your own experiences, if you look into your own life, you'll, you'll see the truth is there. Um, and so I think one really important thing is to learn to at least, you know, improve at being present to the moment, at accepting this. And so uh, one powerful kind of reminder is don't mind what happens, especially when you really want something, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of like not really in your control, you know? Not everything is in our control. But when you really want something, remember, don't mind what happens. Because when something happens, whether it's, you know, considered good, that's a label, there's always negatives. There's always pros and cons. And when something bad happens, there's always pros and cons. And if you look into something more deeply and you see, okay, you know what, this thing I really want to happen, well, what, what's the downfall if this happens? What do I lose if this happens? It's hard to do. But when you kind of dissolve that fantasy, you experience life with a lot more truth, a lot more realism. And you're able to actually bring into life what you want because it's very hard to actualize a fantasy because fantasies aren't real. So remember, you know, I don't mind what happens. And this isn't to turn you into someone that's very lazy or very like just sitting down and meditating for 10 hours a day. This isn't to make you sedated. You know, I can't be in control, so I'm not going to do anything. No, this is to get you 
to actually be in control of your experience because when you're constantly complaining, when you're constantly resisting what is, it's very hard to make positive growth. You don't want to improve while you're resisting. It's impossible to resist something while at the same time try and fix it or improve it or, or make a positive resolution. It's only when you accept it. That's why if you look at like, you know, um, you know, Alcohol Anonymous, the first, what's the first step? It's, I accept that I have a problem. Well, it's because you can't change something while at the same time resist it. Um, acceptance always brings with it room for growth and improvement and positivity. So just remember that. I don't mind what happens. That will bring a lot more peace into your life. All right. Bye.